Hi, my name is Alan Glickenhaus. I'm the IBM API business strategist, and today I'd like to talk to you about API use cases, one of the things that I spend a lot of time with clients discussing. Uh, I thought we'd start with some simple use cases and a methodology, and then talk to where this might go over time as we develop new business models. So let's start simple. Uh, a lot of times when I do talk to clients, uh, and I'll introduce the methodology next, the, they start to jump immediately to some of the more complex situations, and really that's not what you're going to do. You're going to start with some simple uh, scenarios. So let's introduce the methodology, and then we'll show some simple uh, use cases that you can start with in your industry. So from a methodology perspective, I have thought of six categories of uh, areas that I think about when I'm thinking about what APIs might be uh, applicable to your particular industry. Three are on this slide, three are on the next. Uh, the first one uh, is mobile or internal development. Almost all companies start with that. And if you think about what you're going to do with your mobile app, uh, there are three types of information that you might make available. The first is generic information. So this is common information that anyone who's using your mobile app would get the same answers. Uh, things like where you're located, uh, what are your interest rates if you're a bank, what kind of accounts do you have, if you're a retailer, what kind of products do you have, things like that. It's the same list for everybody. Uh, the next category would be things like uh, uh, that are specific to an individual customer. So what is your account balance is going to be different for each individual. And finally, we might look at uh, how uh, the mobile device itself can be taken advantage of in conjunction with the APIs. So things like your GPS coordinates or the camera could be used in conjunction with the APIs to provide a good solution. Second category is partnering. Uh, and we think uh, first about the partners that we already have and what kinds of information we're sharing with the partners already. And then one of the big areas of API uh, growth is in partner onboarding. So if you think about what goes into bringing a partner on board today, for every partner that you work with, you, uh, after you agree that you will be partners, you'll start to um, uh, introduce your, AP, your interfaces to them. It might be a web service interface before you're using APIs. And that could be rather complex, and you need to set up the security around that for that individual partner, uh, teach them how to use the, uh, the, the SOAP interface for the web service, and get them all set up. And that takes effort on your part and on the part of the partner. And when you're done, you have one partner on board. What we'd like to do with APIs is make the uh, API self-sufficient uh, so that the partner can come to the developer portal, find the APIs, sign on and consume those APIs without any effort on your part and very little learning on their side. You've already done the setup for the security and the testing and so on, so it should work very well. The third category is public. Uh, and here we start to think about comparison apps, whether uh, other uh, parts of the industry may be doing comparisons between what you offer and your competition. Uh, it could also be things that you might make available through others uh, that are what I call the industry next door. So uh, we'll get into that a little bit more uh, when I show the examples, but other industries that might send customers to you. The next category is social. Obviously, there's a lot going on in social media today, and we want to take advantage of that. And so we start to think about uh, things that might be as simple as direct references to your company, uh, whether positive or negative, or other things that people are talking about on social media that you can take advantage of. And so those will be some of the things that we'll think about there. From a device perspective, we'll talk about uh, what devices might be taken advantage of and how those devices can work. Uh, with your company and, and provide information to you or get information from you to deal with uh, the client directly. The other thing which uh, I mentioned, not that it's going to be a direct uh, uh, seller for why you'll use APIs, but if you think about what we've done with the user interface technology over decades, every time we come out with a new user interface, whether that was the web or now mobile and whatever's going to happen after this, we always have to go back to those back-end systems and tell the folks, okay, now you need to support the web. Now you need to support mobile. Well, once we have APIs making the data available, uh, without context of an individual user interface, whatever the next interface is going to be after mobile or tablets, that could be glasses, it could be um, you know, something that projects on a screen, whatever it may be, I don't have to go back to the back-end people because we're already making that information available through the API. And then the final category, and probably one of the most important, is valuable data. Every company is collecting valuable data on your clients, about your, what your business is doing, and a certain subset of the population inside the company is getting access to that data. <clears throat> Through APIs, 
we can make that data available to a larger audience inside your company and get more value out of the data we're already collecting. Finally, we might also have a monetization opportunity to sell that data to third parties and make some additional revenue. So let's get into some of the examples. So, and I said we're going to start simple, right? So we're not going to think of complicated things. When we think about the mobile internal development, examples in this case are the account types that a bank might offer, the product list that a retailer might have, what kind of insurance plans or telecommunications plans. Often on your website, you have prices. And really a good way to think about this is what are you doing on your website today? Those are the kind of things you're probably going to want to do on your mobile app. And so those are examples of, of basic generic information. And then when we think about the customer specific information, it might be that they're going to place an order with you. And what is the order status? Or what's their account balance in the bank? And do they want to transfer funds? All these things have to do uh, with individual customers. And we need to qualify who they are and secure that and make sure that they're only seeing their information. So all the industries will have things uh, about that as well. And then finally, using the mobile device itself in conjunction with the APIs, we might find the nearest ATM, right? So to do that, I need to know where you are. And so your GPS coordinates from the phone can help with that. Or where's the nearest branch or store or whatever you're looking for. If this is an insurance situation, maybe we're going to submit a picture uh, of a car accident as part of the claim or deposit a check. And of course, mobile wallet for payments is, is another big area. Partnering, uh, so think about the kind of information we're sharing with partners already. What is the inventory status? Do I need to reorder the uh, additional, additional goods? In the commercial banking area, we think about the uh, large companies that we're supporting as partners. And so what we want to do is make available the APIs so that the, commercial, uh, so that the banking customers can integrate the APIs directly with the bank and make this part of their business processes. And that really solidifies the relationship between the bank and, and the, that particular company. Parts suppliers might make available APIs so that people can order from them and repair uh, places can make available uh, manuals or, or you know, the ability to uh, uh, request a repair for something that they have going on. In the automotive space, options and add-ons and having that be interoperable across multiple different vendors is important and making uh, APIs available for that purpose is, is, is a common thing that people will do. And then in the government space, things like um, sharing information across agencies. So they are your partner agencies, and they need a certain subset of the information inside your enterprise, but not everything. And we can make that available on a case-by-case -case basis through APIs. And then think about smarter cities, and if there's a, a, a situation that occurs, and we want to coordinate emergency services coming to a, a particular situation. And I'll talk more about that when I get to some of the advanced scenarios. And then finally, platform services. Are there things that your company does that maybe others can take advantage of? Billing, hosting, accounting, things like that, where other companies can come into you and take advantage of this, even having nothing to do with the industry that you're in. Uh, the next category is public. And, and so here we're talking about the com comparison apps. So if you want to be involved in a comparison, if you're not going to want to be involved in a comparison, then nobody's going to buy from you because if they're using the comparison app, you're not there. Uh, so you'll probably want to be uh, part of that. And making APIs available that show your products, your pricing, and the availability can help people buy from you. And then finally, that industry next door that I mentioned, and th this is key. Uh, when we start to think about reaching new markets, reaching new customers, and getting new, uh, new customers for our particular company, think about what other industries people are dealing with that need what you provide. So if you're a bank, people who are buying a car need a, a car loan. People who are needing a, uh, buying a home need a mortgage. Or people that are planning for retirement need financial information. So what are the other things that people do that need banking? And those are the industries that you want to target for your APIs and make them available. For government, think about job placement and education, and there's many, many more. Uh, health and fitness for insurance or health care. And finally, for retail and travel, uh, vacation, uh, birthday, and holiday uh, industry might uh, send customers to you. For social and big data, obviously if, a, if a, a someone mentions your company directly on social media, they might be saying something positive about your company and you want to capture that and retweet it, uh, get that information out there. If they're saying something negative about your company, you want to address that immediately before the word spreads and things get out of hand. So uh, social interactions are, are very big. In fact, social uh, APIs are the most common way that people interact with social media. It's not a web interface or a mobile uh, interface. It's through, uh, through APIs. 
Uh, opportunity identification, you might notice that some people are talking about particular things on social media, so there's certain keywords that you can key on. Maybe somebody's talking about going on vacation and you're a retailer and you can sell them something uh, in that area, or maybe you're a travel uh, company that can help them find a, a rental car or a hotel in, in the area that they're going to. And then participating in interest groups as well is something that you can do to uh, have a presence and get your advertising out there and also just pop, populating social media with what you're doing as a company and getting involved. Uh, one of the things I've heard about is insurance companies getting involved in this way uh, because so much of dealing with insurance companies is always in a negative situation when you're either paying them or you have a claim. They want to get out there and, and show you that they're doing good things for the uh, community as well. Device integration, think about the devices. It's not always obvious uh, that you know, something is a device. Not everything is a monitor or uh, a sensor of, or, or something like that. Cameras can be devices, appliances or devices, ATMs, cars. Um, there are many things that are devices and uh, we can share information from the device back into the enterprise and take action on that or send uh, commands out to the device like if it's a camera to, uh, to pan in a particular direction or focus in on something. And so, uh, so those are all things that we can do as well. Uh, I'll come up with a scenario that in the more advanced section on ATMs that uh, will show you some of the kind of futuristic things that we might do in this space as well. And then that valuable data category. So we're going to get access to this data for a larger audience inside the enterprise. That has tremendous value. And you can also then sell aggregated data on clients to third parties and, and make that available. Or if clients opt into marketing, you might sell specific information on them to third parties if they choose to, to opt in to, to be marketed to. Um, the other thing I've, I've talked to some companies about, whether it's a connected car or telecommunications company, as people are driving around the city, their route to work can be uh, detected, and you might sell that uh, in aggregate to third parties for marketing to particular audiences. And then finally, in the government space, there's a lot of open data initiatives for, uh, that require uh, access to data, and APIs are a very good way to do that as well. So that's, that's where we are. Most companies are going to start with that. Uh, and, and I really encourage you to, to start simple. Uh, don't, don't think of, uh, immediately of doing the more complicated things. Uh, we'll get there over time. But I do want to show you where we can go over time. So I've got a couple of scenarios. And these are going to be more ecosystem type scenarios, things that will involve multiple industries working together. So these are scenario based. And, and uh, I'll just call out a couple of examples here. So let's say we have a connected car and it's been in an accident and the airbags have been deployed and there's some possible need for some assistance here. Um, if it's a very severe accident, the car might be able to know that and immediately call for accident. If it's not sure, maybe an alert is raised to the driver's mobile phone uh, and they can either say yes, they need help, or if they don't reply, that might be an indication that they need help as well. And a call can be put out to emergency services. Uh, that could be an ambulance, it could be fire, police, the car sensors might determine which ones of those are required, um, and if there's a fire concern, uh, calling the fire department. As well, the insurance data could be collected, probably not the most important thing to, to deliver right away, but we can certainly collect that and make that available through an API later. And then all the things that are going on around that accident. So an alert can be issued so that other cars uh, can understand that an accident has occurred at a particular place. The traffic apps that they're using can be made aware of this accident and can assess what impact that's having on the traffic and whether or not they need to move around on a different route. Uh, hospitals may be notified that uh, there's certain injuries that might be coming in and if there's damage to the infrastructure, a case can be opened. So you see here, this is not just one industry involved. These APIs are going to be talking to, uh, to many different industries, government, healthcare, insurance, uh, auto uh, apps, social media, all kinds of things can happen uh, based on one particular scenario. And so it's not going to be just one party that's interested, but a whole ecosystem supporting uh, the help that needs to be given to a particular person that's been in an accident. Next scenario, uh, a computer, commuter is going home from work at the end of the day. They're going by train. They get to the train station and they see that their train is running 10 minutes late. Um, they uh, are a, a, a banking customer and that bank happens to have an ATM at the station and they have uh, opted in to being marketed to for selected products that, they're, they, that they like. And so they have near field communication on 
on their phone and the ATM recognizes that they're in the area and it starts to put together some opportunity to market to this particular person. So the weather APIs might be used to determine that it's an extremely hot day and this person's train is running 10 minutes late. So what we're going to do is push an advertisement uh, uh, to that um, customer of the bank uh, for their favorite ice cream that's on sale uh, at a retailer there at the train station and we're going to give them a 10% discount if they buy in the next 10 minutes which happens to be the delay of the train right so all this goes together we then uh, push that advertisement to the to the customer the customer goes into the retailer shows the advertisement on their phone and the retailer will make money the consumer packaged goods company that's uh, selling the ice cream will make more money and the bank will get compensated for part of the transaction for identifying the customer and getting that customer to come into the store so again an ecosystem kind of relationship between banks retails consumer packaged goods uh, all working together with weather APIs involved uh, as well last example uh, a huge winter storm is, is predicted uh, and weather APIs are tracking the the severity of the storm and the path of the storm and interested parties who are trying to figure out how they're going to get home at the end of their day are starting to get notified that this storm is coming in and so the information from the weather APIs is put together with their profile information uh, that uh, will tell them, um, you know, that knows what their typical work hours are, what their route home is, and what the path of the storm is through the weather APIs and plan what possible actions they might take, whether that's leaving early or taking a different route and so on. So the individuals can choose to act and, and leave work. Uh, status updates can be communicated directly to them through their mobile phone or better yet through their connected car so that they're not dealing with their mobile while they're driving in the storm. Um, and, and then alternate routing can happen to take place if necessary so that they can get uh, to where they're trying to go. Uh, if there are road closures, uh, things like that because of maybe the travel accident scenario that we talked before, they would get notified and uh, be able to move around that uh, in a more smooth fashion. And then in addition, we can start pushing the status updates out to social media so that others can see what's going on uh, with the road conditions and the road clearing estimates. So these three examples are just examples of multiple industries working together uh, in an ecosystem and where this API economy is going to go over time. These are not the first scenarios that you're going to work on as a company. So start with those simple scenarios and, and work forward from there. I've written lots of blogs uh, on this topic. Best place to start uh, is on uh, the URL at the top of this page. This is an, uh, a blog that I've written on API use cases for every industry. And if you start here, you get some good recommendations that apply across industries, including the idea of looking at what other industries are doing. Uh, that blog will link to 20 different industry-specific blogs that I've written with the use cases in the six categories that I mentioned earlier. So you can get some sample use cases in your specific industry for, uh, for what you might do to start off with and maybe some advanced uh, scenarios as well. So this is, uh, again, a very hot topic. One of the things that businesses really need to think about as they start to move into the API economy. And hopefully these blogs and this video will help you uh, move forward successfully.